Hello friends, today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about repotting your Monstera Deliciosa so that it can go from this to this. I will also be providing you with some basic care details and pest prevention methods that I use to keep it really healthy, so let's get started. So when should you repot a Monstera Deliciosa? If your plant is really root bound, it's drying out too fast, it has root rot, or it's struggling with a lot of pest problems such as fungus gnats or muley bugs and you can't seem to get rid of the problem after one or two treatments, then you might want to consider repotting your plant. And let me go a little bit more in detail about the pest problems. Um, mealy bugs can exist at the root level and sometimes you might be wiping the leaves doing the q-tips and alcohol treatments but there might be mealy bugs in the potting soil so the best way to get rid of them is to also inspect the roots right and make sure that there's no pests there and to get rid of fungus gnats sometimes you also have to do this get rid of the entire old potty medium that way we can drastically reduce the amount of eggs that are in the soil that will later turn into flying fungus gnats you might also want to consider repotting your plant if you've never repotted your Monstera before. It's probably really root bound, the soil has probably depleted all of its nutrients, the plant needs more room to grow, and it needs better potting soil. Sometimes what also can happen is that soil can become hydrophobic, meaning that it cannot absorb any water. So when you water your plant, you may notice that all of the water is not being absorbed by the potting soil. So if you were to look inside of the pot, like deeper into the soil, that soil is going to be completely dry. And there are a couple of solutions to fix this, like aerating your soil with a chopstick or letting your plant sit in water for a couple of minutes or maybe like half an hour so that it can properly saturate however this may not always work so if you haven't repotted your plant in a really long time then you should probably consider doing it another thing I want to talk about is how do you handle a plant that is really root bound or a monstera that's super root bound should you try to break up the root system to get rid of the old potting soil I only recommend you do that if it has root rot or pests you know to try to get rid of the old potting medium but if it doesn't, honestly, just try to remove what you can from the top and the bottom. If it's too packed, then again, try to trim the root system a little bit, the bottom half inch. Or just put your plant in the pot as it is and see how it grows. That's what I'm personally doing. And the reason why I don't recommend you try to break up the root system too much is because if you do it, if you overdo it, it's gonna also introduce stress to the plant and it's gonna take a couple of months for it to bounce back. I'm speaking from experience. This happened to me with my large Monstera. So basically trimming it or not trimming it or removing a little bit of the potting soil if it's not to root bound any of these things are fine the monstera plant is a very easy to care for plant and it can easily bounce back so you can do whatever you want from these options what type of potting soil should you be using for your monstera deliciosa well, there's not like one specific potting mix you should be using, but it's how the potting mix looks. You want your potting mix to be well draining and chunky. For my large Monstera, for example, I used the Fox Farm potting soil and I mixed it with other ingredients to make it more well draining. So if you'd like to see the exact recipe I use for my larger Monstera, be sure to check out the Monstera tips on my Instagram highlights and you'll see exactly how it is that I made that potting medium. But basically you can add things like orchid bark, coca husk chips, perlite or pumice. For this Monstera, however, I wanted to try the Happy Frog Potting Soil that's also from Fox Farm. And I gotta say, I really love this one. The mix is super well draining and all I added was large orchid bark. I'll put the exact parts of potting soil to orchid bark that I added on the screen so you can see it there. But you don't have to use this specific brand, you just have to use a houseplant potting mix. And if it doesn't look well draining, you want to amend it with more perlite or more orchid bark or any of the other ingredients that I mentioned until you get something that looks like this. Something super simple that you can do, and it's normally what I do whenever I'm trying to repot a plant, whenever I don't add a lot of ingredients to make it more well draining, and I only wanna use perlite, I do two parts of potting soil and one part of perlite. So whenever I go to the garden center, I always buy a potting bag of soil, and I also get a bag of perlite. This way, I know that my potting medium is still gonna be well draining. What type of pot should you use for a Monstera Deliciosa? 
now this really depends on the health of your current monstera and let me explain so some people may have a monstera that's in a really large pot but the plant doesn't need to be in that type of pot because the plant actually has a really small root system and if that's the case your monstera probably doesn't look its best so the idea is you know you take your plant out of the pot you measure the root system across and you want to use a pot that is two to three inches wider than its current root system size now if you have a really healthy monstera and it just needs to be repotted then all you gotta do is take measurements of the current pot and go up two to three inches in pot size these plants don't mind being a bit root bound but i find that they do grow super fast so i would say going up three inches even four inches is probably safest and that's exactly what i did with mine now the type of pot that you should be using it can be ceramic plastic or terracotta i find that monsters can grow really well into any of these type of pots but terracotta does dry out your plants a little bit faster because it absorbs the water from the potting soil so keep that in mind i personally like to use plastic pots since they're cheaper and if you'd like to make it cuter you can use like a basket or a decorative pot that you can put your uh, plastic pot inside that way it covers it and this way you can also use your decorative pot or basket for another plant in the future or just you know use it again for the same plant whenever you do repot your monstera again and you save money are moss poles necessary for a monstera deliciosa no not exactly to be honest you can give it a moss pole and your monstera can grow really well and get larger leaves and fenestrations but you can also achieve the same results without a moss pole. And moss poles are a little bit more expensive. They require a little bit more maintenance. So I would opt out and use a gardening stake or a trellis or even a wooden plank. These plants are climbing plants and in nature they use their aerial roots to support themselves and attach themselves to other trees, kind of like Phalaenopsis really. And as they keep climbing, they get larger leaves and more fenestrations. And the reason why they get more fenestrations is because they're trying to let light pass through to get to the other leaves at the bottom. So it definitely helps your plant to give it some sort of support. But I've seen people grow these plants really well without a moss pole. So I would definitely opt out to use a gardening trellis. Another thing I want to talk about briefly is what to do with all of the aerial roots of your monstera. You can trim them. That's what I did with this specific monstera. You can also just leave them. You don't have to do anything to them and the plant is gonna be just fine. You can also put them in water if you want to. Some people claim it helps grow the plant but I don't think so. I've tried it personally and to be honest, all I did was get like root rot at the tip of those aerial roots so I would end up trimming them. And then I also had to like, you know, refill the cup of water. So I don't recommend it, but you can try it out. Basically, you can do whatever it is you want to do with them. You can also guide them to grow towards the inside of the potty medium. So just put them in the pot and they're gonna be fine. Now let's go over some Monstera care basics. How much light should you be giving your Monstera? I've seen people grow these plants in low light spaces and really bright light spaces and your monstera is definitely going to grow a lot better with the more light that you give it. That does not mean that your monstera wants direct sunlight. You don't ever want the sun hitting it directly too often, I mean too, for too long. So a few hours of direct morning sunlight are fine, like two to three hours. But after that, you kind of want it to be a little bit protected from the sun because if not, the sun is going to scorch the leaves and the same thing can happen with grow lights. It's happened to me. I'll include a photo of it. So I recommend you place your monstera in the brightest room of your home because you're going to see it thrive there as opposed to like a shadier room. Now I keep my large monstera at the corner of this part of the house and even though it looks bright, it's really not. It's a low light space. So I actually have a grow light for it to supplement more light. And you can use regular LED light bulbs for your plant if they're still going to grow. So yeah, the idea is the more light you give it, the better it's going to grow. But make sure that it's not direct sunlight. How often should you be watering your Monstera Deliciosa? I recommend that you wait until the soil is absolutely dry. If you don't know what that means, just use a moisture meter. 
ready. You can even use a chopstick, just stick it into the pot. And if it comes out dry, then it's time to water. If it comes out a little bit damp with some soil stuck to it, that means it still has some water. So just wait until it dries. Now, sometimes a chopstick is not gonna be long enough depending on your pot size. So I recommend that you also try to lift your plant up. If it's really light, then that means you need to water it. When a monstera is also thirsty, the leaves are gonna look a little bit sad. And if you combine all of these different things, then you know that your monstera needs to be watered. How much water should you be giving a monstera? This is a question I often get asked and it isn't really about how much water because not all plants are the same. If I were to give my plant one cup of water, I'm not gonna wet the entire soil, right? It's only gonna wet a little bit and it's not gonna be enough water for my monstera. So when you water your monstera, you wanna make sure that the soil is dry and you wanna make sure you water the entire potting soil thoroughly all around the pot. The goal is to completely saturate the entire potting soil. And don't worry, you're not gonna kill your plant and you're not gonna get fungus gnats. Why? Because you used a well-draining potting soil and you let the plant's potting soil dry out before you begin to water. Once you see water running out of the drainage hole and you've watered the entire potting medium really well, then you can stop watering your plant. You wanna make sure you let it drain really well before you put it back in its decorative pot and you wanna dump out that excess water. And that's pretty much it. As for fertilizer, I recommend that if you've never fertilized your monstera, just stick to a well-balanced fertilizer. So something like a 20-20-20 or 10-10-10. Um, I personally use the foliage focus fertilizer and I use a cap of this with every gallon of water that I use to water my monsteras. But with whatever fertilizer you decide to use, be sure you follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. And it's always best to use less fertilizer than more because it can be really strong and we can over fertilize our plants and we can burn the leaves. So again, less is always more. And lastly, let's talk about how to prevent pests on a Monstera Deliciosa. This one's very important. Pests like to show up whenever a plant is either being neglected, it's stressed, it's not in the right environment, or sometimes they just happen to spread because of another plant that we brought home, etc. I've even had a situation where I bought a bag of potting soil from the internet and it came infested with fungus gnats. And I repotted my plant, I didn't really think about it, but then suddenly I had so many fungus gnats flying everywhere. It was so annoying to get rid of, but I absolutely got rid of the problem after a couple of treatments. So to keep pests away, I recommend that you clean the leaves, you dust them every once in a while, and you wash them. And by that, I just mean just spray them with water. That way you can brush off any pests like thrips, spider mites, aphids, mealybugs, just really easily without having to spray your plant with anything. And it'll help prevent pest infestations from growing. And lastly, you can also take some measures to prevent pests, like using sticky traps for fungus gnats, just in case they do appear. Systemic insect control, which basically you sprinkle it on top of the soil, and whenever you water your plant, it gets absorbed by the root system, and when a pest is sucking on the leaves, it will automatically die. You can even add some sort of topsoil dressing to prevent fungus gnats from laying eggs on the soil. I'm gonna include a section in the description below that will have links to products that I personally used on all of my plants whenever I'm dealing with different kinds of pests. It'll include solutions for thrips, mealybugs, aphids, fungus gnats, and so many others. Now, some of these products may only be available here in the United States, so if you live somewhere else, be sure to let us know what kind of products it is that you use for certain type of pest problems. That way, somebody else, maybe in your country, is also looking for a solution, and they can easily see it in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my previous video where I teach you how to water a Phalaenopsis orchid. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And and thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.